If you're wanting to shoot a documentary, one of the early challenges you face is researching your story. I went to Greece to shoot four documentaries and I went because I felt like I needed to go make something for myself. I had to feel like I was taking charge of my creative life, my creative development. And as keen as I was to just charge into Greece and start filming, the first thing I needed to do was research possible stories. And I did about six months worth of research before I went. Some of it was good, some of it was bad. So if that sounds like where you're at, here's the unsexy side of following your filmmaking destiny. If you think about classic storytelling things like characters, conflict, resolution, important details, dates, events, and the basics of who, what, where, when, and why, each of these aspects needs research, and in many cases they build on each other. This process of finding out what you want to make is messy, but I kind of think of research in two broad categories. First, there's factual research, which is key information that you need to know about the person, the issue, or the topic that you want to explore. A lot of this research is data-driven. It's getting concrete answers to those classic storytelling questions. And the second category is creative research, which is primarily to find creative inspiration and ways to understand and express the themes of your story. You'll have a character or event, but underneath that, what is the story about? Is it love or forgiveness or revenge or redemption or any one of a number of things? I've done another video that's more about finding these thematic inspirations and is this kind of research that makes your doc interesting and unique to you. At the beginning of your project, your first job is to find out the basic facts of your story. You need to do a deep dive so that you can understand the story and find an angle that hooks you. For my series of Greek documentaries, I wanted four modern crises that could thematically link to the classical elements, earth, air, fire, and water. So each element would represent a crisis that had happened in the ancient world and was happening again today. And because it was Greece and because I wanted to do something that was, you know, mythological, I did a whole lot of research into ancient history, into philosophers, into philosophy, into what symbols meant, which God represented what thing, what parable meant whatever. The economic crisis was a big thing in Greece and so I thought that could be one of my modern crises and so I was collecting all sorts of data about that. I even emailed a professor at a London university and went for a coffee with him to pick his brain about ancient Greek economies and tried to find parallels to now. I felt like I was doing both kinds of research, some fact finding and some was creative and textual stuff and it felt really productive. I was gathering lots of ideas, reading books, articles, coffee dates with professors and compiling these big Google Docs just full of stuff. But there was a fatal flaw in my research and it almost led to complete disaster when I started filming. What now remains, compared with what then existed, is like the skeleton of a sick man. In all my research, I come across this quote by Plato and I was obsessed. I was going to shoot my whole Earth film based on this quote. It was going to have this Koyanis Skatsi vibe, which also came from, you know, creative research. And I'd show the degradation of Greece's environment in just the way that Plato had predicted. It was a modern crisis with a classical connection. It was exactly what I wanted. So I gave myself a week to film it <laughs> and what could go wrong? So I'm roaming around Greece, getting shots of the environment. I got shots of trees, of algae, of a truck, because I don't know, it's nature. And my film was called Earth and it's about nature. And Plato talked about trees and something felt wrong. At one point, we're driving down a road and we see flamingos. And I'm like, wait, we've got to get a shot of the flamingos. So we hurry over there and I point my camera at the flamingos 
and I'm just filling with dread, this quiet existential horror because what am I going to do with shots of flamingos? I couldn't even face watching back the rushes after each day because I knew, at best, I was capturing stock footage. I certainly wasn't making a film. At the time, I didn't really understand what was wrong. I'd be filming a tree and questioning my entire worth as a filmmaker, as a human being. I'd come to Greece because I was taking charge of my creative destiny and now I didn't know what I was doing. It was because there was a critical thing my research had missed. Your film can have all the profound, lofty themes you like, but if it doesn't have a person at its heart, then it'll have no heart. You might as well go and write an academic paper because it's not a film. When researching, don't rely solely on Google. Obviously, you'll go to Google first, and that's fine to get a sense of what's going on, because you do need to build up this core understanding of your story. But what you're ultimately looking for is not facts and figures and data. You want human experience. You're looking for a person who's living the drama you want to capture. That's the most important thing, and it's what my Flamingo film completely missed. So how do you find this person? Well, this is old school journalism 101, I assume because I mean, I'm not a journalist, but you've got to reach out and talk to people. So my water film was going to explore the refugee crisis, and I had this vague idea I wanted to examine how the refugee crisis in Greece was impacting water supplies on the islands. So I found a blog that detailed humanitarian aid on Chios. I emailed the guy and got some great first-hand information. And here's the basic email template which will help you. Hi, I'm a documentary filmmaker researching uh, XYZ. I came across your excellent blog, book, video, podcast, tweet, whatever relevant thing, and hoped you could provide some insight into XYZ. Then you write one clear, like, to the point question. And you finish with, also, if you have any contacts who might be able to provide some information, I'd be very grateful. Best regards. Make the email like instantly clear and understandable. And I say just put one question in the initial email because your first goal is just to get a response, engage their openness and just see how much they know. You can always follow up more questions in subsequent emails. Another email I sent out initially went nowhere, but they later popped back up with a potential character. It was a restaurant owner who was delivering water to refugee centers. And the key here is that inquiries lead to information and connections which lead to characters and stories. It's not that the person you email is going to be your character. That might happen, but more likely you'll find character through a chain of connections. And you'll discover someone who isn't in the media, who hasn't already got a million people wanting them. This is why it's so important to get off Google. Hopefully you'll find someone unique and grounded in the story you're exploring. This only comes from reaching out to people. This is also where your creative research is powerful because you don't just want to find any old person for your film. You want to find a person who can best embody the themes of the story. That's why doing the creative research will help you understand how to represent those themes. If you can, go and meet your potential character and film something with them. That wasn't possible for me in Greece, mostly because I actually only discovered the people in my films when I was already filming. I didn't have this research to know who they were beforehand. It kind of worked out okay, but I would have told their stories so much better if I had been better prepared. Any initial filming with your character counts as research too, as it can give a real sense to what your film could be. But finding a strong character is the most important thing. They'll ground your story in the here and now. They'll give you a focus and a perspective through which to view the world. Because without a character, you're just filming flamingos. Mm -hmm.